man, I feel so much better today. Uh, only had a glass of wine yesterday. And this morning I woke up, I uh, jogged for 30 minutes. Definitely need to do something to bring my um, blood pressure. Like I never, <laughs> in my life, never had any issues with blood pressure until now, you know. So I'm 193 pounds, which is overweight for my height of 1.81 meters or just six feet. So it should be around uh, 180 which is uh, 82 kilos so now basically need to lose 13 pounds need to that's my program now need to you know stick to the diet veggies and protein no bread no potatoes you know no dumplings but once a week i'm gonna allow myself jump off the wagon and eat whatever i want pancakes dumplings just once but the rest it's either protein or veggies or veggies and protein and uh, yeah so thank god i never smoked but cutting booze to one drink a day one glass of wine or one small beer uh, because actually they say one drink can help drop down your your blood pressure and uh, jogging three times a week 30 minutes and kettlebell so monday wednesday friday and kettlebells uh, Tuesdays, uh, Thursday, but today's Saturday. I didn't jog yesterday, so I did it today. So now I'm going to jog again Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Kettlebells Tuesday, Thursday. And today, you know, it was difficult because I, I haven't jogged for a while, for 30 minutes, but I did it. You know, I don't care about the distance. You know, it's just basically whatever I can do without going out of breath, right? And one thing I discovered when I was young, and I did like 20 kilometer, 22 kilometer jog, but again, light, light speed, you know, but I was able to do 22 kilometers, you know, like half a marathon pretty much, except, you know, it was very light speed, but I remember I was able to breathe, breathe in through the nose and, you know, exhale through the mouth. But now I find that I cannot do that, you know, because especially it's cold, your nose is clogged up. So I just do like this, you know, when I run, I do two steps in. Sorry, I started saying about jogging and then my phone started beeping with us from Uber and I had to stop the recording. But I was saying is that I still remember that now when I jog at my old age, I have to breathe in through the mouth every two steps and breathe out again through the mouth every four steps, unless I'm running up a hill. So two, four, two, four. And I did 30 minutes. I'm feeling pretty good. And I also started taking, uh, found that, you know, you, you can improve the look of your skin if you start, you see like, this is awful. You can improve the look of your skin with drinking more water. And also I started taking like little collagen supplements. So they should uh, fix the skin damage by, you know, by, by the sun and, you know, too much, too much booze, you know? But yeah, that's all behind us now. I'm gonna bring the blood pressure down because yeah, I do have a history of heart disease in my family, right? My, my late dad had two heart attacks and then the third one killed him and he was only 57. So I'm already doing better, touch wood. And then my mom is okay at 87, definitely much better genes than my father's but she had a mini stroke and occasionally she had some heart troubles just recently she was in a the hospital they put her on a drip you know but then she was there like for a couple of days and they got her out probably had some uh, she's prone to some you know occasional irregular heartbeat and i think she's slightly overweight as well but she does not believe in that. She says, well, when you're older, you're supposed to have slightly more fat, you know? I said, who told you this? That's BS, you know? When you're older, you actually have to be thinner because all that fat is, it's inside you, right? It's not just under the skin, it's inside and it's in enveloping your organs. And that's one of the reasons why you have high blood pressure because it gets difficult, more difficult for the body 
you know, to work because it has all this fat inside. And some people still believe that cholesterol is a bad thing. If we had no cholesterol, I don't know if you guys know this, but cholesterol is the building material that the body uses to create cells, right? And so without cholesterol, we would just, you know, turn into a puddle. And the ma major issue why you have high cholesterol is not because you eat like eggs or meat, it's because your body produces cholesterol, you know? Trust me, I know a lot about this topic because I was really into all this, you know, research and diets, you know, when my father died so young, right? You know, I didn't want to drop dead at 57, so I was researching this. And basically cholesterol, you can, you know, go forward in this video, I just want to mention quickly that cholesterol is created when you eat too much carbs, which carbs turn into sugar, and sugar, the body can process only so much, but then it stores it as fat, right? And fat, to store fat, the body needs new cells, new storage cells. Guess what those storage cells are made of? They're made of cholesterol. So your body starts producing cholesterol to build cells to store fat that you got from eating too much carbs. So you start eating, you know, sweets, uh, rice, potatoes, too many bananas, which are high in, in sugar, right? All this stuff, you know, too many cereals, bread, and then your cholesterol goes up because your body has to build the fat cells, right? And I know all this and, and I'm, I'm still fat slightly, right? Because definitely with, you know, I'm thinking that cooks are the enemy of the people. We make, uh, we make the food, we turn the food into a, a religion, right? Where it's supposed to be very simple. And so that's what I'm sticking to now. Like lunch is just meat. That's it. Either meat or chicken or fish, but nothing else. And then dinner is just, you know, I love grilled veggies. So I just grilled some veggies like yesterday. I did cabbage. I did, uh, I, you know, sauteed some onions. And then I did some carrots uh, and then added, added um, cabbage and uh, some, I think I had some oregano, you know, some thing that I like powder. And it tasted amazing, just like that, just veggies, you know, it was pretty filling. And so I definitely, right away, I noticed I scaled this morning, I lost like a pound, you know, so now I'm at... I was at 194.6, now at 193. But anyway, enough about that. Wanted to mention uh, trucks. So now I push, I, I put my apps on for, on pause so that they don't interrupt me. Oh, I see some guys walking around, knocking on doors. They're either religious leaders or real estate agents. You know, get a real job, you know, deliver some food, come on. Because of course, you know, when you're a real estate agent, the most important thing is getting sellers, right? Getting the properties. Because selling is easy. Once you sign them up, you get a contract, you put them online somewhere, you advertise, you know, someone Kijiji, you know, Rialta.ca, um, stuff like that. But if you don't have properties, you have nothing, right? So anyway, uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk about trucks because... Um, Remember that guy Umberto that had his truck burned down? So he uh, he did a video yesterday and he actually, he we, he called me yesterday. So he did buy a truck. Uh, oh, actually, I think I mentioned this, right? So it's like that a bit ugly, but orange, but a K Whopper, uh, six, six, uh, what is it? 680, Kenworth 680, basically like a dry van, like a regular truck that you use to pull regular dry van trailers or step decks or oh boy somebody's calling me but who is this i think it's oh tell us they called me yesterday hold on yeah sorry about that this was my cellular company calling because of course they want you to i'm signed up for cell phone service but my internet and my cable are from a different company and of course, these guys wanted to switch. I'm pretty happy with my 
cable internet so forget it i'm not switching because i think they're giving like instead of now i'm paying 150 bucks they want me to switch to a plan where it's uh, normal rate is 250 but we're gonna give it to you for 200 like screw you why would i switch from 160 to 200 right anyway so yeah so he got this orange uh, k-whopper he's in the truck and i think he said he's going back to landstar but he, because you know getting your own authority he wants to do what i did but getting your own authority you know is going to take a lot of time but at least he already has authority from quebec because you need to have a authority from your own jurisdiction let's say if you're canadian before you apply for uh, dot um, or mc number right and so he wa he wants to go back to landstar and meanwhile gonna step start doing what i like exactly like i did step by step you know it should take him maybe three four months but his plan is to get his own authority and maybe get another truck and hire a driver well good luck to him but i was looking at some trucks just out of curiosity you know and new trucks on auto trader here in canada i only saw you know i clicked like new any make i only saw three k whopper peterbilt and volvo it was like one volvo one canworth and like 18 peterbilts so it looks like they're having issues selling peterbilts and i know from talking to many people like nowadays peterbilts are not what they used to be years ago you know i don't know i don't like them like the quality is much worse than canworth i never liked volvo because they have they still are probably the only manufacturer that uses steel cabs and they're heavy you know but for the driver they're super comfortable because my first truck if you remember when i became a company driver for uh, challenger motor freight my first truck was a volvo and i loved the truck because it was i think the sleeper was like 60 62 inches but it was tall rise sleeper with two beds and but the truck was so you know it was very agile you know because it was very short wheelbase like 244 probably like regular or 236 uh, which is common for canada and it was so easy to park it was so easy to go around corners and of course i was just pulling a driver and trailer i love the truck but it had a i think it had a 13 speed either 10 or 13 speed you know regular transmission and so now if i were to buy another truck i was actually thinking i was leaning towards volvo you know like in my old age i want to be comfortable and that you know i would get a volvo with an automatic transmission just you know regular truck but prices now man i looked at new ones so my K kenworth specialized truck with four axles huge engine 605 horsepower right 2050 pounds of torque back in 20 in the winter of 2018 when i ordered this was 234,000 canadian dollars right so now i look at these new trucks in 2024 like regular regular truck with a you know 13 liter engine like they all pretty much around 220,000 so peter bills were like 218 all of them Kenworth was uh for some reason it was a it was a specialized you know try them try drive truck with a very small sleeper like 40 inch basically which is no good for over the road but it might be good you know if i had a contract with some local guys where you need that heavy truck you know try drive truck you would be okay but i don't have any contacts here to do that but and then volvo with the big sleeper 2024 model was also around 218 to 20 you know so it's pretty expensive right so my first truck that international that i got used in 2007 it was a 2004 truck and i, re I still remember it was built on christmas day in 23 but all the documents said 2004 international 9400 so it had uh, 500 no four 475 horsepower cat c15 and 13 speed um, um, 
transmission manual transmission and then i started putting money into it i bumped the horsepower to 500 then 550 i bumped the torque from at first it had like what 1650 i dumped it to 1850 and then back then you could go to caterpillar and caterpillar would dyno tune the truck for like 800 bucks and that really the guy you know played with uh you know horsepower and the torque curve and he gave me pretty much all power at uh, high like maximum torque maximum power at like 1400 rpm so when i was climbing like some hills so that truck was super super like the engine the engine was super super you know duper but the frame everything else was everything started rusting after like six seven years the frame was like very short you know if you look at the beams in the back it was like it was a you know weak uh, foundation like the chassis was pretty weak and you know i remember even my mac when i got a mac the frame was much higher even though it was a single frame but the frame was much stronger but that mac uh like the sleeper was tiny right no windows you were just choking there and when it was warm outside but also it i constantly had issues with air in the fuel after the truck was parked overnight you know you leave it overnight every morning i had to it had a manual pump i had to pump fuel and so that otherwise i could feel the truck was losing power and the fuel economy went down and then everybody was telling me that yeah i should have bought a extended warranty and you need to change all injectors i don't understand why they cannot do it properly at the factory but that's the problem with all these uh, mac and volvo uh, 13 liter engines um, at least back then everybody said you cannot buy them without extended warranty because sooner or later you have to change all the injectors because they were leaking air you know crazy but still volvo you know with extended warranty i think it would be a good track just to you know work as an owner operator pulling other people's trailers so i don't know i might do something crazy uh, at the end of the year when uh, my driver's record is clean for three years but meanwhile yeah so today's saturday so i'm working in downtown here with uh, doordash and uber but monday i start my shadowing shadowing business and uh Hopefully they'll uh, hire me and I'm going to make a whopping $23 an hour, which is 50% more than minimum wage. But then still on weekends, I think I'll have to complement that with, uh, with this. Maybe I'll get my, once I get my class one, maybe I was thinking, because Fridays, actually yesterday, I was out all day and f it was not very busy for food i think fridays are more busy for taxi you know but saturday today is great i made some couple of bucks already and it's only probably what i don't know 11 30. but yeah that job so 23 bucks an hour uh eight and a half hours days i don't know if they pay you for eight and a half or eight but you start at seven and you leave at four Right, which is nine hours but i'm guessing they don't pay you for 30 minute lunch break or something but i'll know i'll know monday i'm gonna i'm gonna buttonhole my partner in crime who i'm shadowing i'm gonna ask him you know what it's like working for the company and then monday tuesday wednesday i'm hoping to get my uh, second letter from ontario with the driver's license history and that one should show the date when my AZ was downgraded to GZ. And once I have that super available piece of, 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 of paperwork, I'm going to head over to the registry or DMV and get my class one back. And then I can drive a semi truck, truck, limo, taxi, large bus, small bus, anything except motorcycle. So really excited about that. So we're going to get more subscribers to the channel you know start doing more um, actual tracking videos as long as they don't object to me doing some hands-free 
filming. But yeah, I, I still feel sorry, you know, I, I listen to those morons at the solar farm. Hey, Sergey, what's the name of your YouTube channel? And I got scared because somebody told me that they can actually fire your ass if you make videos when working. And so I went back and instead of making them unlisted, I actually deleted. I had like eight, nine pretty cool videos where I show my work on the skid steer and they still laid me off, right? I hate those guys, you know, they, were, they look so pleasant at first glance. Oh yeah, Sergey, how are you? And then, oh yeah, stop by the office. Uh, there's a guy here who wants to see you. And as soon as I walk in the door, the guy says, oh, we have to let you off. We have to let you go. No reason, nothing. So they don't care. You're just a number. They smile when everything is good, but then they have to cut their costs. Okay, you are 60 years old. Okay, you're the first to go because everybody else was much younger than me, except excavator guys. But all skid steer guys were like, you know, in their 20s, maybe 30s. So of course they look at the older guy. Okay, who do we have here that we can we can cut, you know? Oh, look, this guy, Sergey looks, you know, he's not exactly, he's been around the corner a couple of times, right? Man, it's narrow over here. People are stopping just because there's somebody else from the other side. Like I stop on the side here and there's free parking. I just delivered some, some Vietnamese food over here. So yeah, but I was thinking that would be awesome, you know, to get a truck and I was thinking just go back to Landstar and become a BCO just with a truck, you know, it's 65%, not the best, but I know the system, I know when you put a camera on the top and you stop to take it off, you have to edit that out, right? So no more unedited videos, but you know, I know the system again, without a trailer, it's so much easier, you know, you're only responsible for your truck, but you know, let's say until October, I'm going to clean up my act, improve my health, drop my blood pressure, you know, exercise, eat properly and uh, get my financial affairs in order. And then I was thinking, yeah, maybe in October, start the paperwork because it takes like two freaking months. Make sure that they, they, I qualify because I had that U-turn ticket, right? But it's nothing. It's just a couple of demerit points probably. But if I qualify, you know, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't buy a truck before I qualify because, you know, what if you buy a truck and you start these huge payments again, but then they say, oh no, you know, we had, you had this issue over here. We don't like it. So I would go through the paperwork first and then and they say, yeah, it's okay. I'll say, yeah, I have a couple of trucks lined up. So as soon as you tell me that you're hiring me, I'll go and finalize the truck and I might uh, maybe take some, you know, use the capital in my apartment because I can borrow against my apartment, just make the mortgage payment slightly higher, but I can kill all my, you know, like high interest debt on some credit cards and I can use that money for a down payment on the truck. And then, you know, after like two, three, four years, I can sell that truck and make a killing again because prices keep rising. So I think it would be a good strategy. So. Yeah, I look at that Volvo, like brand new on the line. It, it looks super comfortable inside, big sleeper. You know, if you know, like huge windshield, excellent visibility, super comfortable seats with air suspension, you know, automatic tranny. It's, it would be like, you know, with a drive-in, it would be like, you know, for me, it's like drinking a glass of water. You know, after all this heavy haul, all these 10 axles, all these freaking Jeeps and boosters and chaining, like here, they they you look at the load board they tell you okay here's this load this load this one pays dollar a mile okay forget it this one pays five dollars a mile okay so you go they tell you where the empty drive and trailer is you go hook up drive to the pickup back to the door open doors close doors you load it send a message to the agent or broker you're done and then collect your money on the way to the bank you know laugh all the way to the bank it's probably a new truck is not going to work out because, you know, let's say $220,000. Even if you give them like 22 grand, you know, 10% down, the payments are still going to be like probably three, four grand a month. 
I'm not sure if if it would be sustainable, you know, working for 65% commission, but we'll see. That's just something I've been, you know, thinking about, wanted to uh, tell you guys and just invited to, you know, open conversation if anybody has any ideas, but for now, yeah, that's the plan. The three major goals in my life right now is improve my health, get back class one, and start working and and um, improve my cash flow. Start working with a regular job like this um, equipment uh, delivery business. And then we'll go from there. Hey, this is the end of my working day here in Calgary. Been cruising around, having fun. Just wanted to mention that um, I saw a shopper's drug mart, like a pharmacy. And I went in to buy some uh, fancy, fancy water, really like this Avian because it's uh, French Alps, made by the French Alps. You know that the French make it, it's good. <laughs> and I saw a, a free blood pressure machine. I asked them, do I have to pay? They said no. So I put my arm in there, got 144 by something. But last week when I was doing my medical, I was at 155. So already my pressure dropped by almost 10 units. And then they give you a little legend and it says normal, I, I forgot my lower pressure. I was mostly concerned with the upper pressure, but they said uh, upper pressure normal is considered between 80 and 139. 80 to 139 is normal, minus 144. So only five units above 139. And actually that's what doctor told me. He says, if you're around 140, you're okay. So basically the good news is that I'm gonna live. Just wanted to show you again Calgary at night. I love the look of the TV tower. I don't know if you can see it, but that blue and white. In 200 meters, turn right onto 4th Avenue Southwest West. Like blue and white lights. It's just amazing. It's straight ahead of me. Uh, I'm on uh, Santo Street downtown. And I'll be turning right on 4th Avenue. We're having very good weather. Turn right onto Fourth Avenue Southwest West. Plus eight, even though it's seven seventeen p.m. But look at that TV tower, gorgeous. And it's all skyscrapers over here. So I'm going to stay out probably till 8, because today was a bit slow, but the road's almost dry. It looks like soon I'll be changing, uh, because you know, you change uh, from winter tires to all season or summer tires at plus 7 Celsius, which is I think like 47 or 48 F, and today we had plus 10, 50 F. And now it's plus 8, which is probably 48. But we still have lots of snow. Like I go on some um, small streets in the residential areas. And they still have... They still have... In 600 meters, turn left onto 5th Street Southwest. They'll still have snow and ice. You know, and so of course... Even though I have all season tires, which are not too bad, they're not summer tires, right? But they still, I'm so spoiled by these winter tires, like with this amazing grip, where I never have any issue going anywhere. I can park in deep snow and the, the Jeep will just crawl out of it as soon as I push gas. And so, yeah, uh, I was asking my friend about this, who is in Edmonton, I said, when are you gonna change your tires and he says when it stays uh i don't know he said minus seven or plus seven but basically yeah if weather like today if it stays on maybe for a week and all the snow melts then i can go to the same uh oil quick loop place the guys who put on my winter tires and or maybe I'll go to my Chrysler dealer because I 
you know I don't want to keep those ties again in the kitchen because they do smell they do smell a little bit right I don't think it's healthy unless I can I can find some big garbage bags and you know cover them in those bags then there should not be any smell but I might go to my Chrysler dealer nearby and just ask him to store the tires the winter tires till till next uh, fall I don't think they charge that much I think it's like 70 bucks or something a hundred bucks and that includes also uh, changing your tires but I will Turn double check with them Street Southwest but we are definitely getting into into spring but a few days ago was crazy right minus minus 20 Celsius in 400 meters a slight right to stay on 5th Street Southwest Yeah, I'm still 1.5 clicks away from my destination. So I'm going to keep filming. See if we see uh, any more cute buildings or structures. Like over here, this is kind of like financial downtown. Pretty much all commercial buildings. Uh, hotels, business centers. Lots of restaurants over here. tight in here the way these guys park on the left now this kind of weather it's important to remember to keep your license plate clean right because that's how you can get a ticket if it's not clean I always make sure I clean my headlights, taillights, you know I try to find some fresh snow just put on my gloves and I just clean up all the lights on the license plate with the snow like when it gets dark otherwise you can hardly see anything the public transit is great in Calgary like on my right you see a bus and then now we're crossing over some uh, railway tracks and they have this what they call it light transit it's kind of like a cross between a streetcar and a train it has about three huge cars and you can travel slight right to stay on fifth street southwest and you can travel all over calgary because there's like stations everywhere Turn right onto 11th Avenue Southwest. Yeah, almost missed it. So, like, all of a sudden, I was in the left lane. All of a sudden, left lane turns into a turn lane. So, you can only go left from there. And that's why my GPS was telling me to stay right. Head south on 5th Street Southwest toward 9th Avenue Southwest.
wait a second, this is 9th Avenue. Uh, are you telling me I'm, sp I'm supposed to turn here? 9th Avenue. Oh no, I'm turning. I'm going under that uh, big rail uh, railroad bridge. And then I have to change into the right lane. Because I'll be turning right on 11th Avenue, not 9th Avenue. But here, I hate these. These are so narrow. In oh, 200 we... meters, turn right onto 11th Avenue Southwest. Oh, wait a second. No, this one is not narrow. This one is okay. What? 200 meters? Wow. I better, I better change lanes real quick. And some guys here have these uh, custom uh, red plates, like a red background, white letters. Head southeast on 5th Street Southwest toward 11th Avenue Southwest. Turn right onto 11th Avenue Southwest. But most of our poor folks, we have uh, red letters on, on white background. Yeah, red. In 600 meters, turn left onto 9th Street Southwest. A red, a red on white. Okay, where's my building over here? Okay, 500 meters. All right. So this is 11th Avenue and 6th Street. Smack in the middle of downtown. I hope I'll be able to find the uh, parking over there. That's probably this big building. No, that's ATCO. That's some kind of office tower. <sighs> so, next light. some kind of a loading zone parking loading zone okay what we have here uh, two Your hours destination is on the right two hours payment required the customer requested you leave the order at their door additional instructions are provided in the dasher app well I cannot stay here because I'll be sticking out so I'll get a ticket uh, I cannot go in the alley probably that's private. And you see, like, where do you park? Because this is an easy way of getting a ticket when you know when you park like this. Uh, if there's some kind of a ticket, ticket inspector, he can see right away that you are illegal. Uh, I don't think I can. Can I park over there? Let's go see what it says over there in the alleyway. Does it say private property? Sure, yeah, private property, no parking, warning, private property, and no dumping, no parking. So, yeah, this is uh, this is parking from for this building in front of me so I cannot park here but I'm definitely not risking a hundred fifty dollar ticket to make seven bucks oh, actually wait a second there's a spot in there uh, oh I think there's a spot over there if I can fit in We fit it in here. A bit tight. Wow. 
minute. All right. It says two hours Monday, Saturday. So until 6. Well, it's 7.30 now. I think we should be okay.